Welcome to Worship at First Christian Church. We are glad that you have joined us today. We are part of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. We hope that in our time together, you will experience an element of healing and wholeness for whatever parts of your life are feeling a bit fragmented this day. Let us worship. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we come to you this day in the quiet of this hour, thankful for the opportunity to come to you in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for healing, healing for ourselves as we lay before you our deepest longings, our brokenness, our hurt and pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for healing for others, for those on our prayer list and those who lay heavy on our hearts who are experiencing pain, grief, and loss and are in need of your healing, comfort, peace, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers of healing for the world. We are your disciples and long to be your faithful servants, to be instruments of healing in our broken world. But we confess that it is difficult to do at times. Our hearts have grown bitter with so much hate, violence, and name calling. We are tired and overwhelmed by the work we are called to do. How does healing and reconciliation happen in this world when we cannot even gather around a table and have a civil conversation? Lord, in your mercy, restore our faith in the innate goodness of humankind. Help us to nurture in one another the fruits of your spirit, like love, compassion, and kindness, so that our world reflects you. Grant us the wisdom and courage to do all we can to bring about healing and wholeness for all creation. In the name of the one who loves us into wholeness, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. I am what some would call a lectionary preacher. The lectionary is a pre-selected collection of scripture readings from the Bible used by many churches for worship and study. Unless I am preaching a sermon series with Pastor Tracy or required to preach from a specific text for a class assignment, I will choose one of the four or five texts offered for that week and preach from that. As a minister relatively new to the pulpit, I find this to be a great way to challenge myself to preach on a difficult text that I may otherwise not consider. When I read the gospel text for today, I almost changed my mind. This reading from Matthew is problematic on several levels, and I think we need to take a few moments to talk about those before I get to the heart of what I'd like to share today. First of all, Jesus refers to the Canaanite woman as a dog. A dog. What do we do with that? This is not what we expect from Jesus. It's uncharacteristic of him and doesn't reflect the inclusiveness that we believe is part of his understanding of God and the world. This Jesus, who most of the time we find welcoming sinners and tax collectors, touching lepers and associating with other people, is rude, inconsiderate, dismissive, and downright mean. So why did Jesus say this? I don't know. And apparently the biblical scholars I consulted don't either, as I was unable to find a consistent explanation for his behavior. The greatest weight was given to the fact that Jesus was human. Divine, yes but human as well. He was a product of his time and culture where women, and especially those outside of the Jewish faith, were not valued. Jesus was a first century Jewish man born into a world of boundaries, discrimination, and exclusion. His response to the Canaanite woman would have been acceptable in Matthew's time no one would have been shocked. Please hear me when I say this language of calling people dogs or animals is not acceptable. And even though some people in our country are still doing so, it is racist and discriminatory and must not be tolerated. The second surprising takeaway from this reading is what appears to be Jesus changing his mind. In one verse, he's telling his disciples that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, but then he appears to broaden the scope of his mission when he finally hears 
the pleas of the Canaanite woman. Once again, my research unearthed differences of opinion. Some scholars believe Jesus truly believed his mission was exclusively for the Jewish people. But in this exchange with this woman, he recognized his call extended well beyond the lost sheep of Israel. In fact, later in Matthew, Matthew 28, we hear the Great Commission to go make disciples of all nations. Others suggest it was a teachable moment for the disciples and Matthew's audience. There was a great amount of tension in this community of Jewish Christians as they were wrestling with how to be faithful to the Jewish tradition and law and also follow Jesus and his new way of doing things. Sharing a story of a non-Jewish Gentile woman's great faith illustrated the inclusive nature of God's saving grace and healing. God's love and God's mission was big enough to include both those of Jewish and of non-Jewish faith. I felt it was important to name these concerns we might have with this passage so that they aren't a distraction, even if there is no one right or clear interpretation. It's okay not to have all of God's mysterious ways figured out. But our wrestling and our questioning over these matters shouldn't prevent us from seeing the good news of this passage found in the persistent faith of the Canaanite woman. And that's where I'd like to turn our attention now. The Canaanite woman loved her daughter deeply. We aren't privy to the specifics of what was tormenting her daughter. The demon could have been depression, anxiety, addiction, disease. Whatever it was, her mother was in agony as she watched her child suffer, and she was willing to do anything to help her. News of Jesus and his power to heal had made its way to her, this mother's ears, so she went in search of this man, this woman, a woman with no clout, no voice, no social standing or status in her culture, a.k.a. a dog, is willing to risk rejection and ridicule in order to save her daughter. With the utmost dignity and reverence, she cried out, Have mercy on me, Lord! Son of David, my daughter is tormented by demons. She even knelt down before him as a sign of worship. Her cries of help went ignored by Jesus and the disciples, but she persisted. She was told to go away, but she persisted. She was called a dog, but she persisted. She believed Jesus had the power to heal her daughter, and she was not going to take no for an answer. And her persistence paid off. I admire this woman. She was a fierce advocate for her daughter, willing to challenge the established traditions and power structures to find healing for her child. Our story says that healing took place immediately. That's one of those mysterious God things, too. I'd venture to say that most of our cries for healing are not met with immediate results, but take years to materialize. Sometimes our cries for healing are not realized during our lifetimes. Yet we must still have faith that healing is happening even when we don't see it or when we don't get immediate results. We must persist and continue to actively participate in God's healing work in the world. 
Like the Canaanite woman who advocated for her daughter, we too must advocate for others who may not be up to the task of confronting or overcoming the obstacles that stand in the way of healing. Healing in whatever form that might take. Healing in this story was of body, mind, and soul, and we certainly need that today. But healing also takes on other forms, like the healing needed for those who are deemed others in our world today. Those who have been hurt by the injustices of laws and systems and beliefs that prevent all creation from flourishing. In order to bring about God's vision of a just and loving world into reality, we must have persistent faith and engage in life-giving and transformative healing made possible through God. We find persistent faith in the true story of Anthony Ray Hinton. And you can read his story in the book, The Sun Does Shine. Anthony Ray Hinton is a black man from Alabama who was falsely accused and convicted of murder and sentenced to death. Brian Stevenson was his attorney and advocate, and together they worked to overturn his conviction. Hinton spent 27 years on death row before their persistent faith paid off. They continue to persist this day, seeking healing as they advocate for criminal justice reform. In 1848, the first Women's Rights Convention was held in Seneca Falls, New York, and is credited with launching the woman's suffrage movement. But it wasn't until 1920 that women were given the right to vote. 70 years of persistent faith. Even with the legal rights to vote, many women, mostly black women, were faced with local resistance and opposition and denied their legal rights. They were no doubt met with silence, dismiss, dismissal, and perhaps some name calling but they persisted. Women and their advocates stood firm in their conviction that women should be afforded the same rights as men. We've come a long way in our quest for equality and healing, but we must continue to persist. And then we have racism deeply rooted in slavery and the belief that our black and brown brothers and sisters are less than human. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our cries for healing. I'm reminded of Representative John Lewis as one with a persistent faith. One of his sayings that has stuck with me goes like this. Do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not a struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is a struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and to get in some good trouble, some necessary trouble. He knew full well the trouble and challenges he would face as he advocate, advocated for those deemed less than by many. Despite being beaten and rejected and dismissed, he persisted. Thanks to the countless numbers of people who advocated for justice and the dismantling of racism and continue to do so today, some healing within our communities and nation has occurred, but we are far, far away from achieving wholeness. We must persist. 
The persistent faith of the Canaanite woman brought healing to her daughter. Many of us this day can relate to her story or to the other stories that I've shared as we've advocated for someone or for something we are passionate about. As followers of Christ, we are called to actively participate in bringing about the healing in our hurting world, whatever that healing may look like. When doors are shut in our faces, our voices silenced, or even if we are called names, we must persist in our efforts. We may not see immediate results, but have faith. Have faith that God is working through us to bring healing and wholeness to our fragmented world. This is the good news for today, my friends. Amen. As we gather at this table today, let us remember the last night with Jesus with his disciples having dinner. And let us remember what all he did for us, saved us by his sacrifice of his blood. As we take the bread, at that night he said, take and eat, break off a piece of this bread and eat it in remembrance of me until I come again. So remember his broken body as, as we eat it. Then he took a cup and um, said, this is my blood. Just do and remember it's me until I come again. Let us remember that this blood and, and his broken body was for us. And we're saved by that blood. It cleanses of our sin. We're saved by grace. Amen. of worshiping together in our separate places has come to an end and our time of actively participating in God's healing in the world begins. Go now, be persistent, and get into some good and necessary trouble. Go in peace. <laughs>